Hey everybody, I just wanted to do a quick video about subprograms and offsets. Um, I had the unique opportunity to be forced to do this um, because I had a number of parts that uh, weren't lining up with the coordinate system based off of the fixture. So I had to indicate each individual part and uh, machine them that way. And that was a little bit difficult to do because while I could indicate each part and give it its own offset and do all the machining um, on each part at a time that resulted in a ton of different tool changes so what I wanted to do was have um, a program go through all the parts without having to change tools and uh, each instance reflects its own offset and I'll go through that uh, right now so suppose you wanted to write a program where uh, each part had its own unique offset instead of just being based off the fixture like for instance here each part is theoretically 1.55 inches apart in X and everything else being the same um, however these are all a little bit different because of the way I was uh, playing with uh, some cutting parameters and machine testing, um, I want each to have its own offset, but yet use the same program that I normally use. So here's how we go about assigning an offset to each one, and then having the program uh, basically reflect that offset in its machining. So here we go. Okay, so here is the program that we're going to run, and normally it is based off of this offset right here at the corner of the fixture. Um, but we're going to change it uh, to reflect each individual one on the center line and right on the face of the fixture. Uh, so these are the two programs, and we're just going to change that offset and then post the code. And here's the code, and that's just for one part with one offset. So subprograms are very simple. Um, there's only a few codes that you need to know. M98 calls the subprogram. P1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, however many subprograms you have, um, identifies the subprogram. We're just going to stick with one subprogram, so it'll be P1. And then you have to uh, define the subprogram. And that is done with O1, which is Operation 1. And then an M99 at the end of Operation 1 causes it to return back to the main portion of the code. And then M30. Okay, let's bring back up our code for one part. We need to massage it a little bit to add the subprogram calls and define the subprogram. So we want to go ahead and isolate the main body of the code and define it as the subprogram. So we'll add the line 01 and then we'll just write subprogram so we know what uh, we're talking about when we're looking at the code. Then we come down to the bottom and we'll get rid of the program end sequence there M5, M9, M30 and then we'll add uh, an M99 which uh, causes the um, program to loop back into the main body of the program. It exits the subprogram, goes back to the main body, and then executes the next line of code. We also take the tool change out since we're just dealing with one tool here and we'll put it at the beginning so it doesn't constantly call for a new tool change when it hits the subprogram. We can leave it in Obviously you want to leave it in if you're using different tools. And then we'll add M98P1 and that that calls for subprogram P1. And actually right before that we want to specify what offset we have. So um, we're going to do G54 M98P1 that runs a subprogram. G55 M98P1 and that runs a so subprogram for the new offset and then so on and so forth. So each time we want a new offset we just type in its offset designation P54, P55, P56 um, and we can even use P59, P 
whatever our offset is p18 p255 whatever it is um, and then we call the sub program again and then right there is where we put m30 to end the program so going through it one more time we have g54 offset p98 p1 calls this sub program 01 until it hits the m99 at the end right here that causes the loop back to the main program and go to the next line which is g55 it changes the offset it calls the sub program again which runs it all again until it hits m99 again and then it loops back to the next line to g56 and so on and so forth and then it does that and it also does that with g59p18 or however many offsets that you choose to include and then it goes until it hits m30 and then just ends the program so if we don't want to include um, a specific uh, offset and sub program call we can just put parentheses around it and the code uh, it won't be executed so let's pull up the actual code we're gonna run and it looks like this I put some notes in there in parentheses uh, to identify each position now normally I have eight positions but in this case I only have six that I want to do so what I do there is I just um, put parentheses around the uh, the ones that I don't need which is uh, G59 P7 and G59 P8 but the other ones are all the same G54, G55, 56, 57, 58, 59 so I'm not using position 7 or 8 just because I, I there's no reason to run the code if there's no parts there everything else is the same I put the program end sequence right there at the end of the main code and this is uh, defined as the sub program which ends in M99 so let's go to the machine and take a look at what that's gonna look like so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and designate um, G54 which is in mock it says fixture 1 and then we'll go ahead and uh, indicate whatever we want to call the Z0. We'll go ahead and indicate that. And then when we get there, we'll go ahead and zero the Z. And then move to the next one. I find it's easier to just do each. Uh, axis uh, one at a time for each part instead of trying to do all three of them for each part at once so Z zeroed again uh, we'll switch to G55 or 52 work off that 2 and zero that Z and just do each one like that and it's very important that you make sure that these are all correct Otherwise, the machine is going to do something funky and cut somewhere where you don't want it to go. So we're on part number three, so we'll go fixture three, which is G56, zero that Z. And so on and so forth.
Let's, okay, so we go ahead and do our XY, or sorry, our X. Uh, we'll switch back to fixture 1 or G54. We'll jog the um, primer back over to the first part. And then we'll go ahead and zero on one side of it. We'll zero out the X there. Then we'll uh, jog around to the other side. And zero the hammer on this side. And then we'll take that value and we'll highlight the, the value there and then just divide by two. And that defines the center of those two points as the zero. And then we do the same thing for the next one, except we, we got to make sure to specify we're on the next offset for work offset 2 or G55. It's very important to keep that all uh, keep it all on track because it's easy to go ahead and zero your DROs and forget to change the work offset. And then we just do each one like so. Now in this case the Y is going to be the same on all of them, so we'll go ahead and zero the hammer on the face of the fixture in Y. And then we just go through each offset and zero out our Y. And then just double check them and make sure everything looks about right and it does so bringing up the code for a single part will look like this that's the toolpath for a single part now with our edits to the file by adding a subprogram clause it should look like this so it's that same geometry, but spread out over six uh, locations. So let's see how it machines. Here you can see how the code scrolls down until it hits that M99. And it loops back to the main program and immediately jumps into the subprogram again after changing the offset. For 
some reason in mock on a toolpath display it doesn't do each instance on the toolpath it just keeps repeating the same first one not sure why but it doesn't matter Here's the same situation, uh, but with a spot drilling routine. Again, you can see how the code scrolls through until it hits M99, and then it goes back to the main body, and then immediately switches offsets, and then changes to the subprogram again until it hits the M30 right there, and then it stops and ends the program. Hope that helps someone.